Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind the YouTube channel Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys a fun origami tutorial where you can make your very own fly-by-night flowers that are similar to the ones found in the movie Mary and the Witch's Flower. And uh, this is sort of how the finished flower project can look depending on how many flowers you make and stuff. It's nice little sort of uh, stem with the drooping kind of bell flowers. And um, we'll learn how to do all of that and piece it all together here in the tutorial. I'll put this to the side for a second. But first, I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the movie. Uh, Mary and the Witch's Flower is a film by Hiromasa Yonebashi. And uh, you might be familiar with his name because he's the one of the animators uh, behind Spirited Away and um, Howl's Moving Castle. He's also the director of the movie When Marnie Was There. So this is his new film and uh, it's a really cool story about a little girl named Mary who is visiting her great aunt and is in the countryside and is kind of bored and goes kind of wandering around for a seeking adventure and follows this cat into the forest and she finds an old broom there and also this flower, this fly-by-night flower. And uh, the fly-by-night flower is very magical and it only blooms every seven years and it gives her the special power to become a witch for the night. So the whole adventure sort of begins with the flowers. So if you uh, have a chance to see the movie and you really love it and you want to have your very own versions of those flowers, then we'll go through the tutorial of how to do that today and um, you know, I think it's a really great project to do with kids and stuff too because you can kind of go see the movie and then come back and make the flowers as well. Um, the uh, movie was released in Japan in the summer of 2017 and it's finally now available in the States. Uh, the theatrical release is Friday January 19th so you want to put that in your calendars if you guys are interested in checking it out. And um, there's even a special Fathom Events premiere screening available the day before on Thursday, uh, January 18th. So I'll link some uh, stuff so you guys can check out the page about the movie and find out if any of the theaters in your area is doing uh, when it's showing the movie. And if you guys are interested and want to attend the premiere screening, you can also check to see if that's available as well. So definitely check it out. It's a great movie um, and one of one that will become a classic I'm sure and getting a chance to always make an origami that kind of follows with a movie is always a lot of fun for me so I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys how to make this guy so what you need for this project if you want to kind of make it exactly like you see here you want to have these materials now first of all we want to start off with uh, some seven sheets of paper of this seven and a half by seven and a half centimeter paper. Um, I say seven because uh, that's how many flowers I've made here. You certainly don't have to make that many. You can make one or two. You could make uh, more and make your stem even longer, whatever you'd like to do, depending on how many you're making. But for this kind of a theme of what I have to set up, this is how many you'd need. To get this size piece of paper, you can get out your ruler or you can just take a regular piece of origami paper, which is 15 by 15 centimeters, and you just fold this in half and then you cut that and you get a piece that's like this. And then if you fold that in half and cut it, you will get this size. So with one sheet of normal origami paper, you get four pieces of paper that you need for this tutorial. So you really just need two larger pieces of paper first and cut them down to make the right size. Um, you don't need to get out your ruler and do all that. That can be boring. So <laughs> you also need to have one sheet of green paper, preferably, to be the stem of your flower. And I'll show you guys a neat little trick of how you can roll that up to have the little dangling pieces. Now, the way I made the dangling pieces and the attachment to the flowers was using some decorative washi masking tape. Um, and, you know, I just grabbed some green. Even if it's slightly not the exact same green as your origami paper green, it still looks really cool and can kind of fit together nicely so obviously it's ideal if you can find something very similar but you want to try to use this if you can. If you don't have access to this you can just cut little thin strips of the uh, origami paper if you like um, but then you still do need to have something to kind of tape and connect that stem to the flower itself so you'll want to find um, something to use for that whether it's just clear tape or um, I think glue won't really work so good. You'd have to kind of really hold on to it for a long time to get it to set. So 
Uh, tape is ideal, I think. And of course, you also will need some scissors. So you want to make sure you have all of those supplies ready with you so that you can go ahead and begin the tutorial. Now, um, I happen to make mine using this special fancy paper that's called Aurora paper. Um, this is a uh, paper that I bought in Japan here at the uh, Daiso that's uh, near my house. And I don't know, I know Daiso is available in many other countries, so I don't know if you guys might have access to this kind of a paper. Um, but I think it adds the cool little glistening effect to make it kind of look like magical, like the true fly-by-night flower in the movie Mary and the Witch's Flower. So uh, something to kind of keep in mind if you are interested in using uh, something different to kind of make it look magical. It's a good paper to use. Now this paper is trickier to fold. It's a little thicker and bumpy so you want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you're kind of new to origami you probably want to stick with just regular origami paper. So let me go ahead and start the tutorial here and what I want to start off with is showing you guys just how to fold the bellflower and I'm going to do that using a larger piece of paper just so that it's easier for you guys to see and you can kind of know what I'm doing and then from there we can go ahead and uh, do the uh, way of putting together the stem. So I'm going to start off here with a blue paper to kind of give you an idea of what we're working with and we're just going to start with the color side facing down and I'll fold my paper in half, open it up and then fold it the other way as well. Then open it up and with the color side facing up, fold your paper in half diagonally both ways. What we're doing here is just putting in some preliminary creases to make it a little easier to collapse our paper into what's called, called a square base. So I get all that done, turn it back to the color side, fold it in half, and then just push in and let everything shimmy around until you can lay it flat into this little diamond or square shape which is why it's called a square base. Now I'm gonna look at this and you're gonna have a part here that's a point and then up at the top, you're gonna have all the little flaps of paper. We want that to be in that way where the flaps are at the facing up. And then we're gonna take this outer edge down here and fold towards the center, making a good crease, and then turn it around and do the same thing on the other side as well so that we get sort of a kite shape in the middle. Flip it over and repeat those steps on the other side as well. Once you've finished all four, you should have something that looks like this. Now we're gonna kind of repeat the steps, but with this top section, we're gonna just fold that outer edge towards the center and do that for the first two here on the front and then flip it over and we'll do the same thing on the back as well. And when you do this, it can be a little tricky because sometimes your paper might not want to fold all the way over, especially up here at the tip. And that's okay, don't like pull it too hard or make it tear, just kind of uh, do your best to get as close to the tip as you can. Um, and it'll, it'll all look nice when we're finished. So you should have something then that looks like this with those two flaps on each side folded over. Now we're gonna take and open up this little pocket that we've made here. And I just am going to put, open up straight through here and put a little pressure on this corner so that you could smoosh this down. And we're gonna smoosh this edge even with this edge that you see behind it so that it can lay out flat and create a nice shape here that's symmetrical. But you do have this little extra fold here. And we're just going to repeat that for the other three sides. So we're just opening up this section here and then pushing down on it. So we get something like this, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side too. And then the last one too. So we should have something then that looks like this. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take this part and just tuck it behind to get it to have a nice smooth edge there with both sides being the same. So you can do what I'm doing here where you just hold on to it and fold it behind. That's one way that you can do this fold. 
or you can take both of these sides and bring them together, turn everything over, do the same thing on this side too, and then just fold this over on your own here. And that's just up to you of how you wanna do it. If you'd like to just tuck it on its own or fold it by itself. So you should have something then that looks like this. We have uh, these flaps all folded over and they're the same on the inside as well. Now we're just gonna put a crease right through the middle here by just folding everything in half. And we just do this to help us when we poof open the flower later so you don't need to worry about anything, we're just folding it once. Then I'm gonna fold down the petals here by taking this flap and just folding it straight down. Flip it over to the other side. Take both of these sides and fold them together in the middle, making sure everything kind of nicely uh, lays down there in the middle. And flip it over and do the same thing here too so that you get the other sides that you haven't folded over yet and fold these flaps down as well. So that you get something like this. Then you can take something like a pen or uh, anything that you might have lying around without the ink sticking out obviously and help you kind of poof open the inside here. And you're just kind of creating a nice little edge on each side. So you wanna kind of push and putting pressure, kind of holding with both hands here with your fingers on one side and kind of get this side to open up. And you just want it to be able to create sort of a wall so that you get four sides, sort of a jewel shape, if you will, and that's the finished flower. Then if you want, you can also take each of these little petals and roll them over a little bit to create that kind of curled effect that the flower has. Um, depending on how small of a piece that you use here, if you use something that's like really thin, like a toothpick or something, you'll get a lot of curl, especially with the smaller flowers, something tiny like that can work really good. A pen is almost too big when you're doing the smaller flower. But this is basically how things look when you're finished. And then, like I said, you want to use the smaller paper to make the tinier version. And it's quite a bit smaller when you make it uh, a fourth of the size. This is what it looks like when I've used that seven and a half by seven and a half piece of paper. So um, it is a little trickier to fold a smaller paper. So have patience when you do this and make sure that you try to get really good creases as you go and take your time so that you can uh, kind of go through it. And you're going to be making seven of them. So you'll be pretty good at it by the time you're done. So now that you've got the flower completed, what we want to do is we're going to take then the green piece of paper to make our stem. And um, what I'd like to do is we have the green paper for the stem and then some pieces that I've made here for the uh, little drooping pieces that connect to the flower. And like I said, we're going to use the uh, masking tape to do that. And um, all you do is just sort of start off with about a couple of inches of, of it here, a couple, five centimeters or so. And what I did is I just folded this in thirds, kind of, and it does not have to be perfect. Just sort of roll it over and then roll it over again. And you will have a little bit left over and that's fine. Don't try to fold it over because sometimes when you get to the end like that, then it always pops open weird. It's I think it's better to just trim it. So just kind of trim your excess here. And masking tape full, cuts real easy, so you shouldn't have any trouble getting that trimmed off so that you have a nice kind of clean edge. These don't all need to be the exact same length or the same width, but you can kind of see here, I've got stuff kind of going here where they are very similar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper and looking at it here with the uh, white side as a diamond sort of, I'm gonna state, I'm gonna kind of place these pieces that are going to serve as the stems for my flowers uh, along the edge here. And what you wanna do is you wanna kind of imagine that you are holding the paper in a diamond shape and you want your stems to go ho perfectly horizontally. You don't want them to go this way, creating a 90 degree angle. You want them to go like this. And uh, we're just gonna kind of randomly place them here along and uh, I just sort of put them here like this, and um, I did seven on my flower, so I need one more here, I think. Let me get one more squeezed in here if we can. And we will adjust the length of these later, that's fine, we don't need to worry about that right now, but we have something sort of like that. And then you just take some of this that's long enough, obviously it can be too long, because then we can trim it off later. 
this part can be a little tricky because stuff can move, somebody breathes wrong and everything moves, but you wanna try to kind of get along here as close to the edge as you can and just lay it down quickly before everything has a chance to move away from you. Get that to lay down, flip it over here, and then trim off the excess that you have. And I really recommend using this kind of a tape for this or anything that is lightweight because later when we curl this up, you don't want it to get in the way of it being able to roll up properly. So we have all of that trimmed down now and we have these nice stems ready for us. And this creates a nice sturdy connection inside so that these won't fall out later, which is really good. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to take the bottom part of our paper and we're gonna do a roll. And these can be really tricky and sometimes they don't go the way you want them to. And depending, you know, if you want it to be kind of a really tight stem, you might have to do this a couple of times. But you just basically kind of keep pushing on your paper and getting it to kind of create a nice little roll for yourself. And you just want it to go all the way to the top here. And as we get to stuff, and it can be really hard to get it really tight. I had to do mine a few times. So when, if you're working with kids, you know, they might need to just be okay with having a little fatter stem than a really thin one. But it still looks really cool, I think, when you get done. It's just a little more fat, like a straw, straw shape a little bit then. But we're just going to keep going here until we can get to the very end. And in this case, you do actually need a tiny bit of glue or tape, depending on what you want to use. Um, if especially your uh, tape is a really different color than your paper, you might wanna definitely opt for glue on this step. Um, if it's very similar, you can go ahead and just put it on here and you won't even notice it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use a little bit of glue to keep mine over here I, and uh, get that sort of stable if you can. And what you've got now is this uh, stem with all these uh, smaller stems just sticking straight up. But if you notice as you pull them down, they lay and droop down at a good angle at varying positions as we go around here. And it gives you this nice, perfect set for flowers to put your little blooms on here. And I find this to be the easiest way to make a really strong display for a stem with flowers like this. You can try other ways of attaching. There are other ways to do this in terms of crafting. You know, there's tons of ways. Any way that works good for you to make it look cool is fine. But this is a really nice, easy, carefree way to do it. And then you've got a nice, sturdy flower. It's not going to fall out very easily. You've got a good, nice kind of set. So then you can go ahead and attach your flower. And uh, what I found doing this was that if you kind of take the flower and let the base part pinch just a little bit, you can create just a little little section here where we can kind of put the glue, the tape, and it'll sort of look like the uh, top part of a flower. So what I can do then is take one of these and I like to kind of anchor it a little bit inside where there's a little bit of uh, pockets here. So I sort of take this and fold it in half a little bit if I can, make it a little thinner. And that way I can kind of slide this in between. So it looks something like this, where it's sort of anchored in there because you've kind of folded it in half. And then you take one of your pieces of paper, your tape here, and we're just going to gently put that right on the edge there and fold it behind. and just kind of fold it along the edge so that these extra pieces go at an angle, kind of creating stuff there. And then if you look at it on the other side, we wanna get rid of that little bit of blue, so we're just gonna kind of repeat the steps. I'm gonna put it here and then fold down too. And depending on how long it is, it might come out on the other side, kind of get that tucked away first and then just do the other side if you can. But it creates a sort of natural little uh, effect of that edging that you see on the flowers normally. And that is sort of how you connect your flower with the tape to the stem. And once you finish connecting everything, things might look a little sad and squished. So you want to take your pen and kind of go in there and get things kind of poofed out again so that it looks good. You can also just put, put your finger in there too holding on to the base here too when you work so that you can kind of poof it out as big and round as you like it. The fly-by-night flower has a nice little round effect to it. So this 
this sort of kind of makes it more like blueberry in shape almost. And you should be able to then connect all of your flowers in this similar way to kind of get the nice drooping effect that you see in the fly by night flower that's in uh, Mary and the Witch's Flower, which uh, like I said, is the new movie that's out. If you guys uh, can catch it, it's uh, finally coming to the States on Friday, January 19th is when it's being released. There's the Fathom Events premiere screening on Thursday, January 18th as well. So if you want to see it fast, you can go be the first person to see it. You can go ahead and check that out. And if you want to uh, make your very own version of the flower that's in the movie, the Fly by Night movie, uh, but the Fly by Night flower in the movie, then this was the tutorial to do that. So I hope you guys had some fun making this and I will have some more fun things to share with you guys uh, in the days to come. Thanks again so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.